South Carolina wins again. This one was pretty close, but they find a way to win against the UCLA Bruins. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Slasher U. I'm your host, Christian Rao, here with my co-host, Steve Feck. And Steve, in this game, South Carolina moves to 7-0. and They defeat UCLA 73-64. But uh, honestly, until the very end, they were in the thick of it. There were some times we saw them down in this game. But players like Boston, players like Cook and Beal and Fletcher and, my God, Cardosa, Comes yeah. out of no, I mean, let's talk about SC top 10 for the year. That block running down the court by Cardoso was absolutely insane. I'm going to remember that in my sleep. However, this team found a way to win. Now, now we're seeing that they can win in blowout games. They can win in close overtime games like they did against Stanford. And they can come back when need be against teams like UCLA. What do you think about this one? I thought this one was a very mm-hmm. good matchup. Uh, it, you know, it was. You know, I saw a really interesting little article tidbit as I was doing some, uh, I don't want to say research, but just kind of fine-tuning some stuff on this game. It was at uh, clutchsports.com, and, and they put out the speculation that UCLA, South Carolina, is the new next big thing in women's college basketball, that this rivalry over the next five years will actually blossom and become the game every single year. In fact, they announced after the game that UCLA and South Carolina are going to meet each other the next five years, even after this game. So that that was a really interesting tidbit, I thought. I mean, if Boston does come back, if if, if they grant her another year and and she'd be able to come back, she would be there. Uh, You've got Charisma Osborne and Kiki Rice. You know, at UCLA, uh, both schools are having terrific recruiting classes, and it looks like they're both going to have – I think LSU has the top recruiting class so far going into 2023, but South Carolina and uh, UCLA are right there, you know, in the top 10, certainly. So uh, maybe we we witness perhaps the start of the next big thing. Yeah, It it was tied going into the fourth quarter at 47. But when you hold your opponent to just three field goals the rest of the way, yeah, you're probably going to win unless you're having a really bad, unless you're having a Houston Kent State kind of night. I mean, you're probably going to going to win that. Cardoso j- just played a solid game. I-, I don't know that it was so much it came out of the blue as there have been so many terrific performances leading up to this point. It was just her night to maybe uh, shine. I mean, certainly Boston was the player of the game. She had whatever it was, the 150 millionth double-double of her career, you know, (laughs) or how many of that is going on. I mean, I know it's some ridiculous number there. They had uh, two players actually have double-doubles, and they had – Almost three. Yeah, almost almost three have missed by a rebound. Right. Mm -hmm. So if if they could have somehow twisted the official scorer's arm to give a rebound – I mean, that block by Cardoza should have counted for like eight rebounds or something because that's that's what they missed. I mean, that's what should have happened. In my mind, they got three double-doubles in this one. But yeah, Aaliyah Boss with a double-double and then Fletcher also with a double-double. I really like what Zaya Cook did as well. I thought she really stepped up in this one, 12 points. Uh, I I was really impressed by by Cardoza, though. I thought she really did good coming off the bench. If you really want to consider her coming off the bench, I mean, she played 26 minutes, basically played starter minutes. Uh, Raven Johnson, when she played her very small amount of minutes, she had a pretty decent appearance throughout the whole time. Like, she made a presence. I, you, I heard her name on the announcement multiple times, especially early in the game. And I felt the same way about UCLA's Gina Conti as well. Uh, when I was looked at the stats at the end of this game after watching it. I was actually quite shocked that Gina Conti only had six points because it seemed like every time something was going in UCLA's favor, they kept saying Gina Conti's name. But I mean, Charisma Osborne obviously did a fantastic job. As you mentioned about this new rivalry coming up, I don't think we'll see Osborne in in Boston in years to come in this rivalry. The only time they're going to play again is if they meet in the tournament. I think both of those are set to head to the WNBA next season. But I will... Tell you what, this South Carolina team looks really good. We've seen some resilience from this squad now after their tough win against Stanford and their tough win against UCLA. They finished November with an outstanding 7-0. and I mean, are we shocked that they're unbeaten going through November? Not really, right? No, this is right. a team that we have really seen to 
we, unanimous number one. And we've thought that there's a, a really a, a good team that we're going to see all season long. You look at their December schedule and they only have three of their six games with winning, winning records of their opponents. And it's not like a seven and O or six and one kind of team. They play four and three Memphis. They play four and three South Dakota state, which is a good team. Okay, yeah. That's probably the best four and three team. Uh, and then a four and two Texas A&M, everybody else on their schedule in the month of December has a losing record right now. So it doesn't shock me that if we end the year of South Carolina being 13 and 0, wouldn't shock me one bit, Steve. Oh, no, I, absolutely not. And then I think the maybe perhaps the most important or biggest takeaway coming out of this game was that Aaliyah Boston was able to play and, and put significant minutes. 35 in. minutes. Yeah, you, you know, you got to remember that against Howard, I think that was their, their, their game um, before uh, before this one. Hampton. She, oh, it was Hampton. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was Hampton. I mean, she was on crutches in the second half. Mm hmm you know, she was hurt. Uh, she had a boot on, but she did. She didn't seem to me to be showing any uh, sort of uh, negative impact from that injury. I'm sure it's sore. I'm sure they had it taped up pretty well. But I mean, really, I, I thought she played perhaps her best game of the year from minute one to the end. I thought she played the best, the best that she has all year in, in this game. And UCLA, I guess we're going to have to keep casting our eyes out to the West coast, but we maybe need to go down the coast to LA and not focus so much, you know, in, in NoCal and maybe UCLA is the team that's going to give South Carolina the most trouble uh, in the tournament in, in the final four, if you will, or elite eight. And it's not going to be Stanford. Uh, that'd be interesting to see if that was the case. We don't see UCLA take on Stanford until late February, basically pre-tournament time. So we're not going to see that matchup until very late. But I did like what I saw from UCLA. You know, when you can run with the best team in the country until the fourth quarter. I mean, and that's really what happened. As you mentioned, they were tied in the fourth quarter and then South Carolina pulled away uh, and pulled away nicely in the in the fourth quarter as well. 26 to 17 at the end of the at the end of the at the end of the game there in that fourth quarter. But I did like what happened with UCLA. I think they are a strong team. You know, they they looked good against other ranked opponents so far this season. I mean, they mm -hmm. they put the hurt on Tennessee. I know Tennessee's had some some rough goes, but that's the other ranked opponent they played. They won by 17 in that one. We're going to see them at the end of the year take on Oregon. That's another ranked matchup we should see. They have a tougher schedule for sure than South Carolina in the month of December. They play as of right now on beaten USC. They're not currently ranked, but I think they should be. So we're going to see uh, a lot more, I think, from UCLA in the month of December to see if they're for real. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if this new ranking came out and we saw them either not move at all or actually move up in ranking yeah. after a yeah. loss. I would not be shocked at all because they did show that they're a really good team. And I feel like they could run with with the best of them. I think if there was any kind of flaw in South Carolina, we saw it in the first three quarters. So I think that's a good thing for Don Staley as well. They're going to see some adjustments from this team moving forward. And they have a nice month of December to get everything figured out until until they get to January and then get into conference play. I really like what South Carolina looks like so far. I'm pretty a big fan of what UCLA looks like so far. Let us know what you think in the comments. How do you think about South Carolina basketball? They went undefeated in the month of November. You think they're going to go 13-0 and in the year of 2022 before we get to January? How far do you think they can go without a loss? Is this a team that's going to go undefeated all season? Let us know in the comments below. Hit like and subscribe while you're there. And thanks for watching. Slash for you.